When you're the number one car company in the Philippines for like 20 plus years straight, you don't want to do anything to jeopardize that by making bad decisions, which is why I feel that Toyota has been really quite vanilla. Now, this is just my opinion. It is a fact, however, that they have since stepped out of their comfort zone with their uh, mass market cars with the launch of the extremely popular Innova in Xenix form, which is a hybrid. To say that I was excited about that launch would be like the understatement of the year. Now, although half its size, I believe Toyota has once again captured the imagination of the market with the launch of the 2024 Yaris Cross HEV and everything it represents. Toyota, compact, relatively affordable, and it's a hybrid. Sangkapa. The question is, however, does it live up to its potential? Stick around and find out on this episode of Behind the Wheel. available on iOS but now currently available in the Google Play Store, whip out the AutoDeal app and you'll see that you can get your hands on a Yaris Cross HEV for just under 1.6 million Philippine pesos. But the odd thing here is if you add basically about 80 grand, you can get yourself a much bigger car in the form of the Corolla Cross Hybrid. So the question there is, why compromise? Why get a smaller car when you can get all that space? My answer to that really is, don't ever discount the little guy. What? The little... The... Yeah, I walked into that one, didn't I? I drove straight into it. Ah! Oh, it's so hard to say goodbye. The Yaris nameplate is not anything new, but the Yaris Cross is. However, don't confuse it because there are two. There's one for the global market and this is for the ASEAN market. We obviously get this one. Now, its size is, well, in between two cars that you already know, which is the Rays and the Corolla Cross. So it sits just in the middle at about 14 feet long, barely 6 feet wide, and it's got the height similar to my wife, which is all of 5 feet 3 inches. We're not very tall people, but we're feisty like gremlins. Tiny or nay, it's got some pretty large features on a very chiseled exterior. A large grille, followed by more intakes right under the bumper, capped by a wide off-body color skid plate. If it wasn't for the fog lamps position where they are, the front clip with LEDs and DRLs can easily pass for the larger Corolla Cross to the unassuming eye. Large also are the 18-inch wheels in front of the front and rear disc brakes on this HEVS that keep it 212 millimeters above the ground, easily providing confidence over anything our uncouth city roads and light trails can throw at you. The repeaters on the side mirrors are accompanied by cameras that provide a 360-degree view with a black roof that comes standard on higher models. I do, however, wish there was a bit more thought put into the doors because if you close it with a little something extra, you'll see that there is a bit of a shutter. Now, it's not exactly a deal breaker, but I just thought I'd report it to you because if I didn't, I wouldn't be doing my job. Equally impressive is the rear cargo hold because of its size and yet it still can carry almost 400 liters. 397 to be exact. Now this is your standard balik bayan box and your carry-on luggage and it fits very well. However, you can't fit two balik bayan boxes side to side because it's just not that wide. But I'd like to point out that I have the balik bayan box here and the overnight luggage even though that the aluminum to no bar is still there. You take that out and my goodness, it expands exponentially. You can fit easily three balik bayan boxes including the overnight luggage. Now, a large talking point because of its diminutive size is what's underneath, which is a 1.5-liter four-cylinder naturally aspirated gasoline engine that produces 91 horses and about 121 newton meters of torque paired with an electric motor that can basically run the car on full EV, provided, of course, that the batteries underneath are fully charged, which the engine and the braking take care of anyway. The shocker is just exactly how fuel efficient this automobile is. Because of its electric motor, which is about 
80 horses and 140 newton meters of torque. I took this guy out on Shaw, followed by EDSA, followed by BGC on a Friday evening, a payday Friday evening in December while it drizzled and I was still able to get 13.9 kilometers per liter. What's crazier is that on the highway, we were able to get 27.6 kilometers per liter. I was so dumbfounded that I almost slapped Jack. Well, actually, I did. And I was asleep. I'm sorry about that. I was just so excited. The rear seats may not be very wide. I mean, really, it's best for just two people. A third person, yeah, sure, because the tunnel isn't that high, but really best for two. So it's not that wide, like I mentioned, but it is quite comfortable. I love how soft the seats are. The leg room is pretty good. That's my driving position, so me behind me is not that bad. The headroom could use a little bit more, but then you're just so comfortable back here that you actually might just slouch and really go to sleep. Uh, there are some good stuffs in here. Good stuffs? Good stuff in here, including Isofix tethers, a center armrest with two cup holders, two air vents, not just one, but two air vents here at the rear. And of course, like I mentioned, the soft leather seats. The thing though is, is that there's some stuff that I'm just not too keen on, which is I'm okay with the perforated areas here, but if I gotta stare at it the whole time that I'm in the rear seats, that's gonna get old really, really quick and just get my OCD really. I mean, it doesn't do anything. To cap everything off, you also have two USB charging points that are type C's found kind of underneath. We almost missed it actually. Uh, bottle holders on the door that can fit even large, softer plastic bottles very easily and your share of a pretty good panoramic roof. This is an area really where the Yaris Cross shines because it's got a lot going for it or it's, there's a lot happening up front. Not everything, however, is great. For instance, um, you've got a nice looking dash with nice great touch points and, and whatnot and it feels like it's well built. But there's really a lot going on because you've got a line up here followed by another line, followed by another line. It's probably just as busy as really the front clip and it's not it might not be to the liking to a lot of people. Also, the piano blacks that you will find inside the car. Uh, there's a metal portion here that isn't seen anywhere else inside the car except here. So it's a, it's a kind of a mix of bad, but with also a lot of good as well. And the good is, well, there's a lot of it. You have a full digital instrument cluster, which is familiar because you can actually will see it on the rays. Then you've got a large 10.1 touchscreen that has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and they're both wireless. Yes, both wireless. Then you have physical controls for your air just found down below. And then you've got charging points in the form of a type C and a type A. And then you also have a wireless charger, which is good enough to fit even large phones like the S23 or S22 of Samsung. Those, those phones are really, really large. A downside, no physical audio button to kill the volume right away. That is just relegated to your steering wheel, which is accompanied, by the way, with your cruise control and your trip computers and whatnot on a steering wheel that actually is feels good to the touch. Then you also have a lot of cubby spaces inside this car. The smallest being the center armrest, which is probably good enough to hold maybe a large mobile phone. We use it to keep these cards there. You have a glove box, which is relatively big enough considering the size of the automobile. You've got not one, not two, but three bottle holders on each door. And then in the center, you've got a bottle holder or a cup holder that's big enough to put in even large bottles. Where did I put that? The, the, yeah, no, 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 not this one, the bigger one. Where's the bigger one? Yeah, thanks. Who the hell is that? More driver functions can be found here on the panel on the left, which is nice. It's all in one cluster. It doesn't make this look very busy, leaving it just for the parking, electronic parking brake and the electronic hold. A bit of a downer is that there's a piano black strip on the uh, gear shifter, which is then it's just gonna get dirty. What isn't a downer, however, is the six speakers inside this car. It's a pioneer system, a name that you probably haven't heard in a while, but darn it, it sounds good. Not as good, however, as if, if you were to say, I don't know, subscribe to us, and then you get the notification bell, ding, every time we come up with a new video. Come on, I worked that in. That was, that was pretty, pretty good. good. That was pretty good. 
Seriously, who is this? It was a good four minutes before I realized that the car had been on without the engine running. It was in full EV mode. When the engine did finally turn over to charge the batteries, I said to myself, why is it so noisy? I first thought that the engine noise and the vibrations that were coming into the automobile were a bit harsh. But then I realized not so because I was just used to, just at those four minutes, used to the car being so absolutely quiet, just going, and then all of a sudden the engine kicked in. So if you ever find yourself inside this automobile thinking that the engine is a bit too loud, you might want to think again because it's actually because you got used to the EV mode. Now, I'm not going to say that it is the quietest engine on the planet. No, not at all. In fact, that's probably not the only thing that's kind of noisy in here. If you allow me, if I open this roof, I don't know if you can hear that, but it sounds like the hydraulics of a plane when it's putting its flaps down. The Consuelo de Bobo there is, is that I've never seen something close so very quickly. That's actually quite fast. Suspension is pretty good. I'm quite comfortable inside the car. I'm not being thrown left or right when I'm going through the twisties, even though I'm sitting above 200 millimeters of ground clearance. And going over potholes seems like it's much more stable than you'd expect. See, inside this car, because of the ground clearance and knowing that essentially people will say that this is basically a Daihatsu, I'd expect a little bit more rattles like what we did on the door when we closed it. But no, I think it's actually built quite well. The power of the car comes in pretty well, much better than other cars out there that are, say, DCTs. Now, it's not uh, your conventional automatic transmission. No, it is a CVT. But the power seems to be laid down pretty well, and you don't ever necessarily think that you're going to be kapos when you're trying to overtake someone. No, it's actually quite well. I will say though that I can't speak if the car will perform just as well if all the occupants or all the seats are occupied with occupants. More often than not, it's just me and Jack. So from our experience, it's actually pretty good. There are drive modes inside the Yaris Cross. You've got normal, which I was on almost all the time, except for the few times that I put it in power mode to show it to you and to, to show you how it can uh, accomplish uh, menial tasks like going uphill and whatnot. And then there's also eco mode, which I've never actually gone on, but I'm sure that if you were to put it on eco mode and then put it also into braking mode, your recovery and charging of the battery will be so much more, which will be able to, which you'll be able to stay on full EV mode, which you can a bit longer. I also noticed that, well, we've been lucky enough to take the Velos out and the Avanza out. And while this car isn't exactly your quote unquote family vehicle, because I think that it's more for well, I'm, I'm thinking of my children now that are a bit older, that are a bit more grown up. I think we, we don't need as much space as, let's say, the Avanza or the Velos. But I did notice that inside the cabin, it's not as wafty as all as those other automobiles. The acoustics in here are actually much better. If you were to head on over to our website and decide to compare this car with others, on our Comparo tool, by the way, uh, choices that you might have will include, you've got the Nissan Kicks, which is e-power, fully electric driven, does have a gasoline engine as well, but the push of that is all from the electric motor, and it feels like that car probably is a little bit peppier. Uh, there's also the HRV. The HRV, non-turbo by the way, is also powered by a 1.5 liter gasoline engine, but that car feels like the suspension is a little bit more tuned to being able to take corners a little bit better. This car, in comparison to those two, sits pretty well in the middle, really. Now, if any of those automobiles, including this Yaris Cross, tickles your fancy, then do please try the Get Quote button because it is absolutely free. Get quotes from dealers nationwide and those that are closest to you to find out just exactly how much it'll cost you to get a brand spanking new car just like this Yaris Cross. And when you've tried the Get Quote button, you're probably gonna think to yourself, why this car, why the Yaris Cross 
and not the Corolla Cross if we're talking about a difference of only 82 grand? Well, I'll tell you. I do not believe that anyone should write off the Yaris Cross as a compromise to the Corolla Cross because, well, you've seen it. It's densely packed. It's got so many features to it. Let's go back to the question of, does it live up to its potential? Look, no car is perfect. We've found faults in this automobile, a few vibrations and rattles here and there, literally and figuratively, but they're really not enough to rock the boat. So to answer the question, yes, I do believe that the Yaris Cross does live up to its potential. And I also believe that Toyota's got a real winner here.